Hello everybody and welcome to this video where we're going to be discussing yet another prompt for ChatGPT. This prompt is long and I want to talk about why I'm using the API in the playground rather than ChatGPT itself. I am paying for ChatGPT Premium and I'm also paying for the API. I, so far, honestly, the API is much better. I'm going to show you why in this video and I'm going to show you what I've been doing to create articles so quickly. First of all, let's have a look at the prompt. Yes, this prompt is a little bit ridiculous, but I like it. So, in the first part of it, I like to give the article. I like to tell it what I want it to mention in the article and what I want it to write about. Just for context, this entire uh, prompt is 2,273 words. A lot of that is coding and things. I'll show you in a moment, but let's just talk about the prompt. So I told it to write an article based around Kiton and Cesare Attilini, specifically about the best old money suit brands. You can also mention these are the suit brands, talk about Neapolitan tailoring, talk about what makes these suits special, talk about Italian cut suits, etc. Do not forget to use Markdown to do internal links. Do not forget to put Shopify embeds. You can replace Shopify embeds with short code for WordPress if you're on WordPress. You are a digital marketing assistant. You have the ability to write already optimized content in a casual tone that will engage with our avatar. Our avatar is a man between 25 and 60 years old who is wealthy or perhaps wants to appear wealthy. We, two men, sell the most luxurious brands in the world at very competitive prices. When you write, you only write using markdown formatting. I'll explain why in a moment. That includes ordered and unordered lists, which it actually did for me today. Internal links as Ahrefs and H2, H3 headings, where you should try to always use the focus keyword in them. I will give you the focus keyword. This has changed. I actually just put the article here, but it's fine. It still writes perfectly well. You should take the focus keyword and write an article about it. You should read the first five articles that appear on Google search. I don't even know if this is possible <laughs> for that keyword. Take their headings and rewrite the content around their written headings. I don't know if this is possible. I don't think ChatGPT can do this, but I just put it in there anyway. When you mention a brand on the line after, please insert the, raw, the following raw HTML. It is an embed for Shopify 2.0. The embed depends on the brand. Do not change the format of these embeds. You must copy and paste them directly. Do not use an embed unless it's listed below. So I want to talk about why I put this and what I actually worked out and why this isn't necessary anymore, this part here. So just to have some idea, I used $2.88 worth today. And let's see how many articles that got me. I can't remember how many I wrote today. I wrote one, two, three. I wrote three today. Uh, for $2.88, that would be pretty good. It's about a dollar an article, but I was experimenting for probably about 70% of that. So I'd say the actual cost was about 40 cents per article. But what I wanted to show you, first of all, let's just have a quick look at the rest of the prompt. So the rest of the prompt is just embeds, which I wanted to use. So I put the collection here and then the embed for that collection. All the embed does is takes the collection code here and shows the products from the collection. So I've got all of these different collections, okay? It is a little bit ridiculous. I am experimenting and I wouldn't recommend actually using this many collections, honestly. And then at the very bottom, I've also got all of these links and I do want to add my blogs as well, but I do need to cut down on the amount of tokens. I want to show you this very useful tool that uh, Article Fiesta gave to me today. Basically what it does is it tries to estimate the cost for one article. So all you do for this tool is you get your system prompt, which is the prompt that I'm putting here. And I put that inside um, the system prompt. And then I have to write, uh, let's just go to the playground real quick so we can see this in action. So let's go to chat. And then GPT-4, you might not have this if you haven't been accepted to the API, guys. So I apologize if you haven't. Um, so this is the system here. And then you have to write write the article in the user. Okay, so that's here. And then the AI's reply is a thousand words, which is about how many words we want. And then we press calculate. And the estimated cost is 30 cents for an article. Um, and the estimated tokens are 7670. So let's see if that's actually accurate by running this as a test. But just before we do that, let me show you something very important. These two here, frequency and 
presence penalty. You may be tempted to put it on full in order to get unique content. I actually don't recommend that. The reason is that it doesn't work with internal links and it doesn't work with embeds because once you have one embed like this, it it try it, it gives it a presence penalty or a frequency penalty and ChatGPT just starts to write random content. However, I would recommend putting temperature to one and maximum length as high as you can. So what does as high as you can mean? Uh, it means basically that if I press submit here and it says it's too many tokens, I can just put this number down. So let's just submit. It's probably going to be too many tokens. It is too many tokens. So what I would rather do instead of making my content shorter, or sorry, my system prompt shorter, because I still, I, I need to do that in time, but for now I'm still experimenting. Instead, I'm going to make the response shorter from ChatGPT and I'm going to press submit. What this does is it creates a fully optimized... Uh, why have they written Sartori on with an A? Have I got... Oh, really, ChatGPT? We're going to make mistakes like that. It's written right here, Sartori on Napoli. Why would you write Sartori? That's so frustrating. It never makes mistakes like that, and it's just made like a killer mistake that it never makes. That's so frustrating, honestly. Okay, so let's see... First of all, you can see it's giving me internal links, which is perfect. Kiton was established in 1968, which is perfect. And look at that. It even puts the embed for me. What does that mean? It means that all I have to do is create a photo using, I, I like to use Designer, uh, Microsoft Designer. I really, really like this tool. It makes everything so much easier for me to very quickly. All I do is I do a Shopify featured image blog post with the title old money suit brands and then you can just add an image or you can generate one or you can if you don't have your own images because you don't have an entire photography team like i do then um you can just use the photo like that you can just pick this one for example i probably wouldn't actually i'll probably select this one this one's actually much better this definitely looks more old money style for sure even though the suit looks a little i don't really like this suit to be fair but this looks more old style, uh, old money style than the other ones. The fact that they've put Sartorio Napoli with an A, I don't think that exists, but it probably does. Let's have a look. Sartorio Napoli, Sartoria Napoli just means like um, a tailor from Naples. It doesn't actually mean the the company is called Sartorio Sartori or Napoli. And for some reason, ChatGPT has just suddenly decided to go on go on a rampage and start creating random brands that I didn't tell it to write about. But it's not a big deal. You can very, very easily just change the one tiny mistake that ChatGPT is making in this article. Doing it again and again, that is quite annoying. Okay, so what we do is once we've got this content is I'm going to go to Markdown to HTML. And the tool is called markdown2html.com. And then we just put it in like this. You can see that there are already internal links. If I click this link, it won't work actually because just because of the way this tool works, I don't think it can load things properly. But if I click on raw HTML, and if we look through this, you can see that the divs here are still here. And what does that actually look like? Or what does that translate to on the website? Let's go on the article I wrote exactly the same way that you just saw, I, although for some reason this time it wrote Sartorio properly. We scroll down. I did not change anything in this article. I didn't edit anything in this article. I didn't add anything to this article. And of course, because my internet is bad at my house, the embeds are now not loading. So I look a little silly. Okay, so that took a little bit of time to load. This is not a perfect solution by any means. It's just... This is the best product embedder that I could find that instantly put my products into uh, the article without me having to do anything. So yeah, that's my entire workflow. That's my entire process. I will leave everything in the description as usual, guys. Make sure that you check it out. I would recommend having a significantly shorter prompt. Do not do what I'm currently doing. The only reason I'm doing it is because I know that eventually there's going to be fine tuning. And once I can put this data just in the system without using 7,000 tokens every time, I think that's how it's going to work anyway. Everything's going to be a lot better. 
for now, in my opinion, this is the best content that you can possibly make with ChatGPT. I encourage you guys to read this article. You'll find it in the description as well. I highly encourage you to read it for yourselves and just see just how much better the content actually is compared to other AI generated content that you may have made for yourselves. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you really soon with some more content and peace out.